After she ended her 2020 bid for the presidency, Elizabeth Warren has been doing a lot of things, making a lot of moves to grow her influence within the Democratic Party. And one of the things she's doing is endorsing Democrats running for Congress. Now, what this has really shown us, if you weren't already aware of who she actually is, is that she's not serious about getting progressive policies implemented. Because the individuals who she's choosing to endorse are um, not progressive. And there are very viable progressive candidates who are running who she just completely ignored. And some of them who aren't necessarily the most ideal, most progressive, who I don't support, it doesn't make sense why she, in her position, isn't supporting someone who is very obviously a quote-unquote Warren Democrat, whatever that means. So let's talk through a couple of these uh, endorsements here because they are really showing who Elizabeth Warren is in actuality. The first person who we'll talk about is Teresa Greenfield, and Elizabeth Warren chose to endorse her over the true progressive in this race, Kimberly Graham. She tweeted, I'm proud to endorse Teresa Greenfield in her run to represent Iowa in the United States Senate. Her life has been defined by hard work, determination, and resolve. I know she'll put the needs of Iowa's working families first. Okay, well, we know now how important healthcare is, Medicare for all. So what does uh, Greenfield have to say about the issue of healthcare? Well, she claims healthcare is a right, but yet she doesn't actually believe it is a right in actuality because she only supports quote-unquote access and explicitly does not support Medicare for all. Rather, she says she just wants to expand the Affordable Care Act to include a public option. Now, looking at Kimberly Graham, however, she explicitly supports single-payer, which includes dental, hearing, and vision coverage all free at the point of service. Now, ask yourself this. If Elizabeth Warren was serious about Medicare for all, would she be endorsing the anti-Medicare for All candidate over the pro-Medicare for All candidate? Of course not. So when progressives told you that Elizabeth Warren backed away from Medicare for All in favor of a public option, this is more evidence that what we were saying was correct. Because if you want something, don't you think you would endorse people running for Congress who would actually help fulfill your vision? Don't you think you would hold strong no matter how much criticism you face? So she endorsed someone who is just a standard run-of-the-mill Democrat who doesn't support Medicare for All, who's championing access to affordable health care, which is entirely subjective. We all have access to a lot of things in life. I could technically purchase a Lamborghini. I have access to it. Does that mean that I have the means to? Of course not. So this is meaningless. This is corporate Democrat speak. But Elizabeth Warren endorsed this person over someone who's very bold, Kimberly Graham. Unbelievable. But that's not all because she chose to endorse Jerry Nadler over another real progressive named Lindsey Boylan, saying, I proudly endorse Chairman Jerry Nadler in his run for re-election to Congress. His record shows that he doesn't just know how to fight, he knows how to win. I'm honored to call Jerry a friend and someone I continue to work with on important legislation. So first of all, Jerry Nadler does not know how to win anything. He's a standard, run-of-the-mill corporate Democrat, and if you truly wanted to affect change, why would you endorse him while someone else is running who actually has a real vision for America. And look, I get that you don't want to endorse someone who you consider, uh, you know, the primary opponent of your friend. That's fine. But you can just sit this one out. If there's a real progressive option running, why not just sit this one out? Why do you have to make an endorsement in this instance? Well, you don't have to, but she chose to do it anyway. And what's weird is that this uniquely contradicts what she claimed to stand for during her presidential campaign, because as Jordan Sheridan points out, Elizabeth Warren boldly called for Google and Facebook to be broken up as a candidate. Google is Nadler's top 2020 donor. Facebook is number five. So why would you endorse someone who stands against what you said you believed in? Why? What's the point of that? It makes no sense. So as she builds this brand of Warren Democrat, she's got to explain to us what that means in a policy sense, because we get what it means politically, right? But what does it mean when it comes to policy? What does the average Warren Democrat stand for? Because it seems like we don't know. This is, you know, inconsistent. And the ideology of, you know, the average Warren Democrat seems pretty incoherent or non-existent altogether. Now, the thing about Jerry Nadler is that 
you can make the case that, you know, maybe he's not as bad as people like to make him out to be. He co-sponsored Pramila Jayapal's Medicare for All Act, and that's great. I give him credit for that. But the problem is he's taken thousands of dollars from health industry packs. So how are we supposed to trust him when there is an actual progressive option who's not taking that money, who also claims she supports single-payer Medicare for All? And the thing about this is Lindsey Boylan actually feels betrayed by Elizabeth Warren endorsing Jerry Nadler over her because she used to respect Elizabeth Warren and she responded to Warren's endorsement on Twitter saying, I have been a big supporter of your career and it's unfortunate that you looked right past me to the guy who it took three decades to pass three things and who takes as much money from companies as he does from people. How is that progressive? She adds, this is my daughter writing you a thank you note for running for president. I told her all about you. I won't tell her the story of how you didn't even bother to know who I was was before you endorsed my opponent. And she concludes by saying, by the time I'm at your stage in life, I promise I will not overlook other women and close the door behind me. Yeah. And I feel for Lindsay because, you know, if you truly believe someone is progressive, for them to not endorse you for someone who's milk toast, who doesn't actually get anything done, who doesn't stand for anything, it seems to fly in, you know, the face of what you stand for. But again, Elizabeth Warren doesn't stand for much. You know, whatever progressive ideals she came into Congress with, I mean, she's clearly abandoned them. If she truly was a progressive, don't you think she would have endorsed Bernie Sanders when it would have made a difference after Super Tuesday when she dropped out? No, she chose to remain silent because now she hopes that maybe she can be Joe Biden's VP. So it's just, this shows you once again that Elizabeth Warren doesn't stand for much anymore, and she isn't actually committed to progressive policy proposals. But let's put, you know, these two endorsements aside. One endorsement that honestly doesn't make sense to me, uh, or lack thereof, I should say, is Ayanna Presley. Let me remind you, Ayanna Presley, she broke from the squad when they all endorsed B Bernie Sanders, and she endorsed Elizabeth Warren. Now, we kind of expected this to happen because they're both from the same state. But Ayanna Presley stuck her neck out and became a surrogate, one of Elizabeth Warren's top surrogates, gave her that progressive credibility as, you know, a member of the squad, and Elizabeth Warren has yet to endorse her. Now, you can say that endorsement is coming. Maybe she'll endorse her in a week or so because she's been kind of like trickling out these endorsements. But how is Ayanna Presley, who has been loyal to you, not your number one endorsement? I have nothing against Ayanna Presley. She's not my favorite progressive. And, you know, I'm very skeptical of her. But if I'm Elizabeth Warren and this person who I needed to get an endorsement from was there for me, why not endorse her? I don't think Ayanna Presley is even going up against a primary challenger who can beat her, who's strong, if there are other options. In fact, I don't even know. So you literally lose nothing. So why aren't you there for Ayanna Presley after she was there for you? It makes no sense. So Elizabeth Warren, once again, is proving she just she's a coward. She doesn't really stand for much. And she's showing you she's not committed to progressive policies because if she was actually, in fact, committed, don't you think she would be making endorsements of candidates who explicitly support what she said she supported when she ran for president? So look, the reason why I'm talking about this is because in 2024, assuming Joe Biden is unable to beat Donald Trump, there's going to be a vacuum left open by Bernie Sanders' absence. He's not going to run again. And Elizabeth Warren is going to try to fill that void being left open by Bernie Sanders, but acknowledge she's not real. She's going to Obama you because she doesn't believe in anything. She's proven that time and again. She's gone full mask off. I don't think you needed this extra information to demonstrate how much of a phony she is, but in case you still weren't convinced, here it is. Now, I brought Kimberly Graham, who's running for the Senate from the state of Iowa on my show, and she's a phenomenal candidate, and I'll link you to that interview down below, but I have not yet had the pleasure of talking to Lindsey Boylan, so I'm going to show you one of her campaign ads, because after watching this ad, you can't say that Elizabeth Warren had a legitimate reason to just ignore her, because this is a serious candidate with the real record of actually accomplishing meaningful things. Take a look. Before the pandemic, I was focused on issues that are more relevant than ever, and I had my story ready to share with you. How I got to New York. How I was able to build a career and a family. How I love it here, but ours is the most unequal district in the country. How I fought for higher wages and better housing in our city. And my credentials. I was Deputy Secretary for Economic Development for the State of New York. 
And then the world changed. New Yorkers are living and dying through this public health crisis. It's outrageous that congressional leadership went on recess without getting enough cash in the pockets of those who need it the most. I come from three generations of women who've lost custody of their kids because of mental illness and addiction. My family would have been devastated to miss just one paycheck, so you can be damn sure that as a congresswoman, I won't be taking the week off while millions of people file for unemployment. Growing up, I had my share of struggles, but I've always said, what can I learn from this? And what can I do about it? So I led job creation for the state of New York. After the federal government abandoned public housing, I negotiated hundreds of millions for NYCHA. After Hurricane Maria, I led disaster relief efforts in Puerto Rico on behalf of New York. I've dedicated my career to public service. We need to elect people who have skin in the game. It's not just that I understand how our issues are connected, it's that I'm gonna do something about it. So, I mean, Lindsay is qualified. She's accomplished. She has a real agenda. You can actually go to her website and see a plethora of policy positions that are bold that she's taken. Whereas with Jerry Nadler, I mean, he's been in Congress for how long? We don't really know what he stands for. He'll do um, whatever he thinks is going to be politically expedient. So that's who, you know, Elizabeth Warren chose to endorse over Lindsay, over Kimberly. And that's just really, uh, it's, I don't even want to say it's disappointing because there's this implication that I'm shocked by this. I'm not shocked by this at all. This is exactly what we've come to expect from Elizabeth Warren. But meanwhile, I mean, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is endorsing progressive candidates like Nabila Islam from Georgia, like Sam Lee Lopez from New York, and Marianne Williamson, also a presidential candidate in 2020, just endorsed Shahid Buttar, Nancy Pelosi's challenger. Michaela Wilkes, Steny Hoyer's challenger. She also just endorsed Eva Putsova. So, I mean, everyone else is trying to do everything in their power currently to affect change, to get more progressives elected to Congress, whereas Elizabeth Warren is endorsing a bunch of inc incumbent Democrats over progressives, which um, makes no sense. She's endorsing um, corporate Democrats over progressive Democrats. I, like, if you thought that Elizabeth Warren was progressive, that's fine. But now that she's gone full mask off, don't be surprised when she does even more things that contradict what she purportedly stand stood for, you know, in the past. She's not progressive. Or at least if she is progressive, um, ideologically speaking, she certainly isn't committed to getting that vision carried out, right? So, I mean, this is Elizabeth Warren now. Um, I'm at least thankful that she is not hiding the fact that she doesn't actually care about progressivism. Uh, that's... That's good, at least. You know, being honest is, is good. But um, just, again, don't be surprised because this is who Elizabeth Warren is.